Hey, welcome back to another weekly vlog. I am uh, starting this off. How are you doing? How are you doing? I have, um, how many days have I been back from Iceland? Like two. This is my third day back in Toronto from Iceland, so I'm still, I'm still pretty jet lagged. I've been getting up at like seven, but going to bed at like eight or nine because eight or nine for me here kind of feels like um, 1 or 2 a.m. Um, so I kind of need to get back on track with that, but it's been nice getting up early. I have not started editing my Iceland vlog yet, but I think you'll see it before this vlog, so I'll link it up above. I had such um, an otherworldly time. It was incredible. I had such a good trip. Everything was wonderful. My boyfriend and I had such a good week. Um, it was amazing, amazing, amazing. Being back, um, it's taking a bit to get used to. I think when you come back home, after you know a time away or especially such being in such a different place it's a little bit difficult on top of the exhaustion especially because iceland was like <laughs> hardly any people um which was really nice especially what we were doing and where we were going um it was really just us and the outdoors and the sheep and obviously being back in toronto which is incredibly noisy and populated um have i left the apartment yet i haven't left the apartment yet I'm just like not ready to go back out there, but I do need to grab some like fresh produce and fruit today at the grocery store and I have to get Kels for some more food. So those are kind of the errands on today. And yeah, I'm just slowly trying to ease back into um, doing some things here. Obviously I've, I've been doing some YouTube work and today I also need to start doing some more university work. But um, yeah, this is gonna be a week in my life settling back in at home fully embracing the cozy spooky autumnal season because i feel like i haven't really had a chance to do that yet with everything going on so today i definitely want to dig out my halloween or autumn decor because i think i know where it is where i threw it in when we moved in but um i will see We'll see. So I thought we could decorate together. I'm also in the middle of four books, so um, I definitely want to make some progress on this and what is going on. Um, just tell you guys about them. And oh my god, please. And yeah, so the oldest one, I'm still reading Game of Thrones. This one I've kind of put on the back burner for now just because um, I kind of want to save a little bit of it for winter, like that much maybe. Um, so that's what I'm going to do with that but i'm still loving it i don't think i've made oh no i'm on page 488 so i definitely did make a little bit more progress and then the goal for today is to finish wide sargasso sea by jean reese i only have like 40 no like 35 pages left um i am really liking this but it is kind of putting me in a bad mood because it's a pretty hard hitting book with a lot of misery, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. Um, the writing at times is so gorgeous, but also I'm finding it um, a bit more of a challenging read just because Jean Rhys and the way she switches perspective um, and the way she writes is very different and at times a little bit hard to grapple with. It's about Antoinette who marries Mr. Rochester, um, so it's kind of about Bertha's story from Jane Eyre um, in Why Sargasso Sea, Mr. Rochester or the Englishman is actually the person who bestows her with the name Bertha. Um, that's not the name she was born with in this book. Her name's Antoinette, um, and she lives in Jamaica with her mother, um, and her mother remarries, and it's kind of about her life eventually being married off to Mr. Rochester, so um, super tragic. There's a lot of different themes being discussed in here, and um, yeah. I was supposed to have finished this a while ago, so goal is to finish that today. And then I really want to get a head start on some more spooky reads because I haven't read that many. Um, but when I was in Iceland, I started Heaven and Hell by Johan Kahneman Stefansson, and it's so good. I bought this in Iceland. I love this cover, um, and it's so, so good. So um, I got, how far did I get through? I haven't read this since the airport, but I'm on page 70. Um, it's written so gorgeously. I cannot wait to tell you about this book. Um, it's so, so good. I'm obsessed with it. Um, I'm so glad that I found an Icelandic book that I'm like in love with because I did like The Blue Fox by uh, Sion, but I didn't love it, love it. But this one I'm loving, loving, loving. So that is um, everything I'm reading physically. And then I did start an audiobook. Um, when did I start this? 
I think I started this yesterday, but it's called Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston. I just saw this on Libby and it was available because none of my other holds were in. Um, and it looks kind of spooky, very like fairy tale esque. It's about um, the wildwood that, of course, is cursed, and it's like your typical fairy tale. Um, the woods are full of malignant creatures, and the power of the crown of the king keeps it all at bay. But when this book opens, the king has died, and our main character, Karis's best friend, is the princess. And so she is now having um, the coronation to wield the crown and make sure the woods stay in their place. Our main character also is like cursed from the woods because every time she bleeds, um, she creates plants, flowers, things grow. So, um, so far it's really charming. And she has like a little fox companion and it's just kind of what I need right now. So pretty happy with everything I'm reading, but um, yeah, welcome to the vlog. I think this is just gonna be a week like reshifting um, settling back into my bones. I went to yoga class for the first time in so long yesterday, so it was pretty challenging after a big break off just because I've been so busy. Having Carolyn here for a week, which was great, and then I went home for a little under a week, and then I went to Iceland for a little over a week, so I just feel like it's been a while since I've settled back into a routine, so that's really what this week is hopefully going to be, but yeah, yoga was really nice yesterday. I don't think I'm going to go today because I'm really, really sore, but I did book a Pilates class for tomorrow. So anyway, this intro is getting very long. I do want to try to dig out these Halloween decorations, so let's try and find them. Eat the squirrel. Hey, oh, <gasps> <gasps> stop eating that. Stop eating this. So we also got the TV hung up and then the rest of the floating shelves that I had went below. So I think they look really cute. I mean, we could have done like a, you know, bigger shelf down here, but I already had these. So I didn't want to buy anything new. Um, so up here I have the two Game of Thrones books that I have. And then this um, little shelf, I put like a lot of cute middle grades and then just a few young adult that I really like. Um, <laughs> and some bookmarks, except for this one. I haven't read Traitor to the Throne, but I really love these three. And then over here, um, at the top of that one, I have the two Wheel of Time books that I have, and then um, a whole bunch of fantasy that just worked there. So um, now though that the wire is like <laughs> kind of hanging down in the middle, I would love to put just a piece of art there to kind of try and cover it up any more than I can because it's kind of unfortunate that it has to go like that but um, yeah it's been really nice and cozy in here so I love to put like another piece of art and then calcifer's mushrooms <laughs> are in the corner um, but that's how everything's been looking okay I just had some lunch and I got dressed for the day I'm about to go out and grab some groceries, mostly just fruits and vegetables and maybe a few snacks and coffee. We're almost out of coffee, which is very important. My hair today? What? I don't know. 
shirt and these pants with butterflies on them are both thrifted. Um, I got these pants on ThreadUp and then this just from a thrift store in my hometown. So I'm gonna go head out. It looks like it might rain soon, so I'm hoping it doesn't while I'm out there and then I'll be back and then I really need to start doing some uni work. Okay, so it's an hour later now almost and I have a confession to make. I didn't go to the grocery store. <laughs> I am gonna go. I think I'm having a harder time of it than I thought I was. I just got hit with like a huge wave of exhaustion and um, just feeling really, really down. And yeah, I think it's just hard because like I went from spending like eight days straight constantly with like my best friend, my boyfriend, and exploring a new country and then all of a sudden, like, you know, I'm back here alone in the apartment in um, silence and Kelsifer is an amazing company, but it's just kind of a huge change all of a sudden um, and yeah, it's just a little hard to get used to again and I'm just really feeling it, like, especially trying to go back and go through all these emails that I have and get back into my schoolwork, do all my modules. It's just a little bit of an adjustment right now and I'm feeling a little bit like, what am I doing? Um, it's just kind of hard to make yourself pay attention and like really be in like the kind of, I guess, busy Toronto work lifestyle when I know that somewhere thousands of miles away, there's a sheep farm where everything is so quiet and, um, that feels like the most real thing in the world. It's just being, being with some sheep, eating some grass next to a waterfall. Um, yeah, so I'm having a really hard time transitioning right now, but I just made an iced coffee and I was like, Emma, you just need to get up. You need to stop feeling, not even sorry for myself. I don't feel sorry for myself at all. I just feel really uh, very down, very, very down. My mood is very, very low. Um, so I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna sit, I'm gonna plan some content. I love planning content, I love planning upcoming months. I am excited for tonight though because Uncharted has come out on um, PC, uh, I believe so, on Steam. So we're gonna play Uncharted um, together. I'm really excited because I've been wanting to play Uncharted for a really long time. I love, love the Tomb Raider games and uh, I've never played Uncharted before, so we don't have any console, so so happy that it's out. And then I think we wanted to try like a new Thai restaurant tonight, so we might either do that or walk to the water, I don't know. But I'm excited for tonight, I just have to get through the rest of my day, plow through some work, but yeah, I just wanted to give an update because I love just talking about what's going on really in my life with you guys, so yeah. Um, I also really want to hear like how how you guys are doing, what's going on in your life what's going well, what's not going well. Um, yeah, I just felt like a good time to check in and update. So yeah, I'm gonna try to stay awake because all I wanna do right now is sleep. Kelsar is currently playing with an ice cube that I dropped. Um, but I think the first thing I'm gonna do is answer my emails. All right, it's now Wednesday evening. Oh, Kelsifer's on the counter. What else is new? Yeah, so I've had my like fourth outfit change of the day. It's just been that kind of day, but I'm now going out. I'm actually gonna go on a dinner date first, but this is very cute. Ah, I just really like this. I just got this shirt in Iceland. Um, this cardigan is thrifted from Throw It Up Again, but it's originally from Forever 21. And then these pants are from Simple Retro and these boots are also thrifted from thread up pretty much anyone asking about where i get clothes it's literally pretty much always thrift stores mostly from thread up the online thrift store or simple retro that's literally it um pretty much so that is the outfit we are going to a thai place i'm really excited because i'm pretty hungry and then i don't know what we're gonna do from there we might get cat food so very exciting date night and then um i think we're gonna play uncharted so yeah we've both had a pretty <laughs> we've both had a pretty stressful time um our first few days back here in toronto so it's very much needed but um i will let you know how the food is so good morning truly 
No better feeling than getting over your technical issues. And finally having Uncharted on the big screen. It is Thursday morning now. We had a really good night last night. Um, the Thai restaurant was so good and I'm so excited because I still have leftovers in the fridge. But for the life of us, when we got back, um, we couldn't get um, the HDMI cable properly connected. It was just glitching all over the place. But I fiddled around with it for five minutes this morning. It's working and I'm so happy. I played my first little bit of Uncharted last night and like, I am enjoying it. I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, I've never played it. I don't know the story. I just know that we're following our guy who has a tragic backstory who runs around the world finding treasure or something. Um, I feel like, I don't know, the vibes I'm getting right now, I feel like I might enjoy Tomb Raider more. Um, I'm not going to play anymore because I'm going to wait until he gets home from work and I have a bunch of work to do myself. So. I'm just so jazzed. I kind of want to replay Tomb Raider now. I did also finish Wide Sargasso Sea last night, which was my goal. I gave this four stars. This is a book to definitely put you in a bad mood, so do be warned. And also I did find it a little bit challenging, but um, very powerful, very disturbing, um, very important. It talks about a lot of different topics. The writing is um, a challenge, but also so good, and yeah, I'm just really happy I read this, I got this done, and now I can complete that module for class, which I'll probably do right now. I think I should play just like five minutes. Five minutes. I'm wearing my Powerpuff Girls set. I started watching a new show this morning just because I was feeling so down, and I just literally turned on the first thing I saw and now I'm kind of into it, even though it's not good, but I'm just really into it, and it's called Falling Into Your Smile. It's a Chinese drama about um, this girl who joins an esports team, a professional esports team. It's like, it's League of Legends. I'm having the most random morning, but I'm just so jazzed that like, man, I feel like a god right now. When you fix technical problems that no one else could fix, it's truly a feeling, truly a feeling to overcome the cables. <laughs> I'm gonna play for like five minutes and that's it. morning so it is finally friday and yeah yesterday i just took it really easy it's already almost two o'clock and i did so many boring like um budget tax emails invoices all of that kind of stuff this morning so that's all done and now i've been switching back and forth between working on um another module for my course this morning and editing i've just started editing um my iceland vlog which yeah as i said i think you'll see before this one but um the sun is finally out this morning we're gonna 
gonna go for a nice walk tonight and then hopefully play some more Uncharted because I was really liking it, really getting into it. Um, and yeah, I'm just so excited. We finally have a TV that like I can sit on the couch and play games um, because it's been a long time. So yeah, but this morning while I had my coffee, I also read so much more of The Monk. I was expecting this to kind of be a slow read because you know, it was written like, or published in 1796 and um, it's an older Gothic book. I thought the language was gonna take me a bit to get through, but um, look at that. Last time I updated you, I was on page 54 and now I'm on page 182. So I don't know why, but the writing, I'm finding it so easy to get through. I'm getting through it so quickly. It's just really, really easy to get through, which I am so surprised about but um essentially there is more than just the story of the depraved monk ambrosio who relinquishes all of his vows and slides into a world of depravity we actually have a number of different stories going on at the same time although the story of the monk is definitely the one that i'm most interested in and the one that when it switches perspectives i'm like uh can we just get back to the main kind of story the other stories also have to do with either um, breaking out of the convent and breaking your vows and also having to do with religion and everything like that. So we have the story between the monk who finds out that one of his like fellow monks whose name is Rosario is actually not a man. Rosario is Matilda um, and she's disguised herself so that she can get close to Ambrosio because she's like kind of obsessed with him. But also alongside the story we have um, this other woman named Agnes who is now a nun in the neighboring convent to the monk's place. Um, and she was pretty much put there against her will and her lover, who is, oh God, I don't know his name, Raymond. He's trying to rescue her from being a nun. So you have that whole storyline going on and kind of their whole love story being told. But then you also have Agnes's brother, Lorenzo, who is kind of involved with trying to get Agnes out and the vows that she broke or is going to break with Raymond and Lorenzo is also having kind of an affair of his own or trying to get married to this woman named Antonia. So there's like three stories of love slash lust slash breaking religious vows going on. So yeah. Um, so far, 182 pages in, he hasn't really slid like the monk, our main story, into utter depravity. Like he's just kind of chilling with Matilda. She's still pretending to be a man and they're just kind of living their life. But at the point I am now, he is swiftly losing all interest in her and their relationship. Like she is completely in adoration of him, but on his side, it's now just slid into nothing more than like appetites and needs and he doesn't care about her at all. So. I don't know what's gonna end up happening with them. I'm really liking it um, and I'm just really, really surprised how easy it is to get through. So I have like a little over a hundred, maybe 150-ish pages to go. So I hope I can finish this soon because I do have a lot of other works to get through. In terms of the audiobook, I did decide to ultimately keep going with Among the Beasts and Briars? Is that what it's called? Among the Beasts and Briars? Totally forget who this is by, but I decided to just keep going with it. It's absolutely nothing revolutionary. It's just kind of your standard young adult fairy tale, but it's very comforting. Um, so we have Karis, who, like I said, is the royal gardener. She thinks her life isn't gonna amount to much, like she's not gonna be sung about in any tales or songs, but on the day of her best friend's coronation, who's going to become the queen, um, at her coronation, the forest attacks because between the crown, which is the source of their power and which controls the forest, the wildwood, switching from ruler to ruler, um, the kingdom becomes vulnerable. And so the forest has attacked and now Karis is on the run in the woods with her fox companion and a bear and it's just kind of good fun honestly so i don't really think it's gonna be a super high rating but for what i'm just like listening to when i'm cleaning and doing other things right now it is like a fun semi spooky very nice fairy tale to listen to so yeah just recommend if you want like a good palette cleanser i think or if you want just like a little bit of sweet magic in your life um because once again i just love the description of like plant magic making little potions, <laughs> cooking in the kitchen. It just kind of has that niceness that I adore seeing in fantasy books. I'm gonna read a little bit more of this. I think right now I'm gonna go start editing the Iceland vlog, although I'm not really in an editing mood. Okay, so I actually forgot that I wanted to do a book 
unhaul as well so i thought we could do that now because i've been making a lot of progress this year on like reading from my shelves which has been a huge huge goal for me is just to narrow down the number of unread books that i own and in doing so i found some that i don't need to keep i don't need to hang on to so i'm going to be doing a little bit of an unhaul to make space for <laughs> Some more books, of course. Um, so the first one I'm going to be unhauling is, sadly, The Shadow of the Wind. I thought I was going to enjoy this as I got further along in the story of a boy named Daniel who discovers this book called The Shadow of the Wind and then he finds out that someone is trying to wipe pretty much the existence of the author and of this author's book and the rest of his books out of the world. He goes on a quest to discover why. The writing I thought at first was charming, but as the book continued I found it felt like it was trying way too hard it felt really performative it didn't feel sincere the characters felt less like characters than just um caricatures the way that everyone spoke in this book was kind of just like how authors write people to speak if that makes sense all of them were talking in a way that was just way too extra adding sentences on that were so so dramatic don't really like stories about stories either like stories about books and stories and i did get carolyn to spoil the whole book for me and in the end i was just happy that i didn't um read the whole thing because it's quite long and i was just really not enjoying the next one is another dnf and that is the x hess oh my god the x hex by aaron sterling this was on my october tbr um i tried to read it and you guys did warn me that it was too cringy and yeah, I just am not in the mood to get into another romance book that I detest. So this one I'm probably going to give to my grandma because she loves reading romance. She actually recently watched my romance reading vlog and then she called me and she was like, that's my girl. And I was like, yeah, but I didn't like any of them. Um, so I do pass off a lot of the romance books that I don't enjoy to my grandma and she ends up liking them. What was the one she recently really liked? She loved, oh, what was it called? It was just way too cringy and I was not enjoying it, so this one's gonna go. I also DNF'd Hideaway by Penelope Douglas, another romance. I cannot do this. Big regret that I ever bought this. Very, very sad because this is a hefty book, but I just don't think I'll be reading any more Penelope Douglas ever in my whole entire life, probably. Although, should I try Punk 57? Like, that's the one that people keep recommending to me. Um, should I try? Should I give it a go? I've seen so many people love Punk 57, but I don't know. I'm also going to be unhauling Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This one just has to go. I did finish this one. I didn't like it at all. I'm not going to continue with it, um, and I just don't really want it on my shelves. So yeah, hopefully I can replace this with some high fantasy Brandon Sanderson, so we'll see. Finally, these two you've already seen as well. We have Throttled by Lauren Asher and Gothicana by runix throttled by lauren asher was just a, another romance that i did not enjoy so very sad very sad in the romance world all of these i'm either going to be giving away to someone in my life or putting them into a little library box or donating them so happy about that and yeah now i have some more room for books but like the goal is i'm trying not to buy any books i'm just trying to read them all so welcome back to spooky town there's nothing spookier than my mental health right now how are we doing um i do have some reading updates i do have a little bit of a book haul other than that uh that's all i've got you know i'm not gonna lie i'm feeling very hollow very hollowed out the city and the city life is doing a number on me i am so envious of the people that i see who seem to love it here and fit in it's hard to feel at home here it's hard to feel like this is my home it doesn't feel like that i do feel like i don't fit in um i've taken a few days off from filming just because i like couldn't couldn't it was really hard to like be on camera and just try to talk i'm doing a little bit better this morning so trying to be productive trying to get some things done and trying to do what i can it's hard too because i haven't really been i um, super happy with the content I've been making lately and it's hard not to let like your mood and your thoughts and like your mental health spill over into what you do, especially when what you're doing is so personal. So I've definitely <laughs> gone through a period where I'm like, I'm just going to chuck this whole vlog, but you guys seem to really enjoy the vlogs and you do seem to enjoy when like I am open um, and you don't mind when I'm not doing well, which is just thank you. You are seriously all amazing um but yeah today's a very gloomy rainy day i'm so curious if you are someone who likes 
big cities like what what do you love about it like i'm really trying to change my point of view and to um be as excited or as happy as um so many other younger people i see living here and i'm sure they all have their own struggles but i hear so many people just gushing about toronto loving the vibes here to me it's just suffocating i think because as well i'm living more in the downtown area the culture downtown is obviously quite different um everyone goes out almost every night it feels like to the bars or to restaurants or to clubs and that's not my scene at all i don't really drink um and yeah the nightlife nightlife isn't really my thing i'd much rather just um stay inside books books are a good thing so let me talk to you about them because i have three reading updates i um i'm still reading the monk i haven't finished this yet my goal is to pick this back up because i haven't read it for a couple day days now but uh i would really like to finish this before spooky season so also the noise the inescapable noise um but i did start and finish a book and i actually needed this which i wasn't really expecting to lighten the mood a little bit and that is mary's monster by lita judge this was on my october tbr and i'm so grateful to this book i did not think that like i needed this in my life at all because um like <laughs> mentally or as a point of like strength and inspiration for me but i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this so mary's monster this was also a gift from one of you guys thank you so much this is about mary shelley's life um it is called how uh, she created Frankenstein, but it's so much more than that. Like it just let me learn so much about her life and what Lita Judge really cleverly does is map out the points of her life that she thinks contributed the most to the creation of Frankenstein and like seeing those connections was actually so wild. This deals with so much grief, but in a way that I find very um, productive because you see Shelley Mary Shelley using everything that's going on in her life and um, not even in her own personal life but in the larger uh, for example war that was going on and just was ravaging its way through Europe as well as Shelley Perceba Shelley her husband um, and as well as in the scientific and political debates of the day and she's just pouring it all into a masterpiece a uh, creative masterpiece into her novel and it would just it made me so emotional um it made me want to do the same it gave me so much inspiration so much hope and i actually just really needed this in my life um i will say i gave it four stars not for the writing i did mention that um in my tbr it is written in like free verse little tiny poems or like journal entries and I wasn't really a fan of Lita Judge's writing, I will say that, but um, I loved the art. Every single page looks like this. There's like full, full illustrations on every single page that were just gorgeous. Um, and on top of that, it got a four stars because the way that she connected everything together in the narrative was so great. So I will say if you wanna read it, don't be expecting like riveting writing. There were a couple sentences that were cool, but overall, um, wasn't super impressed with the journaling style, but the ideas and as well it's so reassuring to read a book like this about Mary Shelley that has pages and pages of references, quotes, like where exactly she's getting this information from, like you know it's all fact because most of the stuff that she talks about does come directly from Shelley's diaries because she kept extensive diaries, which I would love to get my hands on, love to get copies of those, but yeah very impressed with this, loved it so much, and I'm really glad I picked it up, highly recommend. I also got to learn so much more about Mary in general and her life and um, the people around her and stuff like that because obviously the very sensational story about her creating Frankenstein is just that um, Lord Byron challenged them to write their own ghost stories when they weren't satisfied with the ones they were reading on a spooky stormy night and that's how Frankenstein was born but Lita Judge really takes the time to go back and of course pick up on all the little moments and the big moments in Mary's own life um, that gave birth to her monster. So super appreciative to this book, honestly, because it ended up being exactly what I needed. Um, it's not a fun time. So much of her life is misery, um, but she uses it very productively and artistically, obviously. So love this, really recommend. A couple minutes ago, or actually, no, I'm not done it, am I? 
Okay, I have nine minutes left on Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston. Okay, so I really wanted to enjoy this. I really did. I thought it was going to be a good pick-me-up. I've been really craving some lighthearted stuff, even though we're reading, we're reading misery and depravity. Um, but I kind of have been wanting some really, really lighthearted stuff. Like I said, I've been getting into this drama called Falling Into Your Smile, which is just the ultimate cheese ball cringe um, show. But like, I need it. I really, really need it. I just need something light and happy um, right now. So I picked up Among the Beasts and Briars and like I said, okay, I tried really hard and I was enjoying it in the beginning. Um, it's giving off, you know, very whimsical fairy tale vibes and the ambiance, we shall say, that I really enjoy uh, that's usually included in fantasy books. It was there in the beginning, but then the book completely went off the rails and I've already rated it on Goodreads, even though I have nine minutes left of it, but it's not going to change at this point. I know that. So I think I gave it two and a half stars. It ended up being a really big disappointment. Um, the writing wasn't too bad, honestly, especially for young adults, but the telling of the story, so the chapters really just all felt like scenes do you know what i mean and then it would cut and then it would jump because we jumped from the perspective of karis um who is the gardener's daughter the royal gardener's daughter and then we have the perspective of her fox companion so it just felt really choppy the way that it was written like she had you could tell she had written out these individual scenes and then she had just put them one after another without making anything flow without like you know putting glue over all of them so it just felt quite choppy um and the story was just like a little bit confusing and not very exciting for so much of this book it's just karis and the fox walking through the woods being attacked by the things within the woods trying to find this like lost ancient magical city to save the kingdom and it was just really, really boring. Um, and yeah, not a fan of the romance in this book. So I'd say maybe just skip this one if anyone was thinking of reading it. Not that I've seen anyone even mention it ever in my life. I found it on Libby. I was hoping this would give me some nice fluffy feelings. I really wanted it to be comparable to The Blood Spell by CJ Redwine, which is another fairy tale retelling. I don't think this is a retelling unless it is and I'm just mixing it up, but I think this is like, a more original fairy tale. Here we are. I think the next audiobook I'm gonna pick up is Nothing But Blackened Teeth um, by Cassandra Kaw. I've been saving this one for spooky season. It's only two and a half hours long, very, very short. I've heard not good things about it, so it could be an easy DNF, but it just, it looks gorgeous. It looks spooky. It sounds cool, but like I said, everyone who I've seen try and read it said it's just not good. We have a mansion, which is the perfect venue for a group of thrill-seeking friends, um, but a night of food, drinks, and games quickly spirals into a nightmare. I do also have a little bit of a book haul, and whose fault is it? Carolyn, if you're watching this, you know, you know damn well it's your fault. So the first one I have here is A Little Penguin Black Classic. This is actually my first um, Penguin Little Black Classic edition, and it is Tolstoy's How Much Land Does a Man Need, as well as what Men Live By, I think, is in both of these. So this is our Tolstoy pick for October, those two short stories, and then our live show for both Dickens, um, Martin Chuzzlewit, <laughs> which I DNF'd, and um, these two Tolstoy stories will be the first week, first weekend of November. So I'm gonna start this today. It's extremely short. Both stories add up to a total of 53 pages. So I need to get this done before the end of the month. Uh, I'm actually really excited about this, especially how much land does a man need because it's about a bargain with the devil. So I'm very excited about that. And then I did buy two more books. I'm not gonna say what these are for yet, but they are Once There Was a War by John Steinbeck, as well as A Farewell to Arms by Hemingway. Carolyn has been screaming at me to get A Farewell to Arms for so long, um, especially because I got to read Hemingway for the first time when she was here in the summer. And um, yeah, I finally got A Farewell to Arms. And then I also got once there was a war in the really nice vintage edition. So I got all three of these on book depository, so they weren't too expensive. And yeah, I'll be starting this one today and then um, I guess you'll see what's going on with these two. But that's my little book haul reading updates. Um, today we're gonna be reading some more gothic devilish, devilish um, lit. So that is the update.
as the kids say. The vibes in here today are immaculate. I can't even see out my window. It's so foggy and rainy. I have the autumn lo-fi on. I just lit a candle. I have <laughs> my iced coffee, some cookies. I'm just about to get some things organized and then start reading today because I still haven't read, but I've been working on other things. I edited an ASMR video, which I'm very excited about. And um, yes, I got my Iceland video up finally, so. I was not expecting the monk to actually turn my stomach and make me feel ill, but it has. Um, it's um, Agnes's narrative, I guess, and it is so horrific um, that I feel like I want to vomit. So just know if you read the monk, um, it's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot going on, shall we say. I just finished The Monk. This was wild, absolutely wild, absolutely crazy. I feel like I don't wanna eat anything for like the next 10 days. Like it just made me feel so nauseous. Um, everyone's storylines come together in here. Like I was saying, the three kind of separate couples and their storylines, but we also have the two religious centers of the monastery as well as the convent and what's going on in there and like you really do see parallels to the french revolution that are made a lot more obvious as the book goes on i'm not going to spoil too much but yeah a lot of crazy things and there is actually like a plot twist at the end which i really liked and lucifer is in here it's just <laughs> So off the rails, um, but I think so interesting. Definitely has, of course, all of the staples of um, gothic fiction, and yeah. I did enjoy parts of this. Some parts were way too drawn out and just way too, you know, 1796 rambly, but on the whole, made me queasy, which is definitely uh, cool. <laughs> I appreciate that, um, but also just a wild, wild, wild ride, and um, I actually enjoyed a lot of this, and I would love to do a deeper analysis on this. I wish this would have been on a syllabus somewhere for school. I mean, obviously, I could just write my own essay on it for funsies, but um, yeah, really happy. I finally got to finish it this Halloween season because last year I didn't get to, and there weren't as many cool, gothic, gloomy descriptions as I was hoping, like Matthew Lewis's writing. Um, I actually kind of like his dialogue better than his descriptions, but um, for example, I think the Castle of Otranto. Oh man, which one is more wacky? The Castle of Otranto to me is more wacky. This is just much darker. The tone in this feels a lot more sinister than the Castle of Otranto because the Castle of Otranto is like big suits of armor and skeleton men in the graveyard and the monk is like violence, sexual violence, um, religious violence. There's blasphemy, black magic, torture, and murder. I'm really glad I read this and this was actually a gift from Rose. Um, this is like one of the first ever gifts that I received in my P.O. box back home, so um, thank you Rose because yeah, you sent me The Monk and I finally read it and um, really really liked it, so yes. Also, nice floppy oxford world classics edition so um i think i might give myself a break from the classics and not start tolstoy tonight actually i'm kind of in the reading mood um which is great and i kind of want to read something else um i just feel like i'm getting back into being really excited about 
reading some good books. So I don't really know what I'm in the mood for. Maybe we can pick one together and explore the options because I definitely do have other books that I put on my October TBR. Um, so it'll probably be one of those. Like I said, I am kind of in the mood for romance, but like not fun romance, just kind of like agony. I'm also going to be playing some more of, I think, Uncharted tonight. I am liking it, but like everyone in that game is such an awful person. And I hate, I hate our main character. I hate Nathan Drake. I hate him with such a burning passion. I think he's an awful human being. Um, but the game is just fun. If I haven't already mentioned, it's Uncharted 4. Um and it's my first time playing Uncharted at all and in this one I am looking for a pirate treasure so you know just having fun with that. Good morning so I pulled three books I don't actually know now like these ones I took off my shelf last night and then I started watching Twilight and then I fell asleep so um a good night though a good night so these are the three that I pulled and now that I'm seeing them in the morning I'm like Mm, there's one in particular that I think I'm just gonna put back and that is The Secret Life of Laszlo Count Dracula. This one I did put on my October TBR mostly because like this is one of the oldest books that I have on my shelf. Like I bought this long before um, I started my YouTube channel and I just picked it up thrifted. It is, so the premise of this book is that there aren't actual vampires, like the supernatural beings don't exist. Instead, vampires are just really tortured, demented people. What does it say? Terrible, tortured human be beings who walk around um, obsessed with drinking blood, which I really like that premise. I think that's really cool, um, but I've not heard great things about this book as well. It's like so long and it has nothing to do with Dracula. Um, apparently that was just like attached to the title to make it more appealing. Um, but yeah, only 800 people have read this though on Goodreads apparently. So I could be one of those people, but I've been flipping through here and I don't know, I'm just not really in the mood for it right now, but I'm like seriously starting to wonder when I'm ever going to be. So I'm not sure. The other two I pulled, I'm like definitely more into them. The first one is The Girl from the Other Side by Nagabe. This is a manga. I bought this last year um, and I, I could read this really quickly. So, um, but I don't know if I'm going to be doing like a 24 hour readathon on Halloween or just a spooky 24 hour readathon. So I might save this. I just have to figure that out. And then kind of similar with this one, I might save this too, but that is quite in Japanese ghost stories. This is the one I'm most leaning towards right now. I've also had this for a while. This is a gift once again from Michael. Thank you so much. This is such a gorgeous copy. Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, I've yet to read this and I would really, really like to. So I might start this. Like, I might not read this all at once. I might start this today. So I think I'm going to put Laszlo back and then I'm going to pick something else. I'm even kind of leaning towards Interview with the Vampire instead. Watching Twilight, maybe picking up vampire books what is happening i don't know but um yeah i think i'm gonna start this actually right now i do have a yoga class in half an hour that i need to get to so i'm not gonna start doing any like major projects or working on anything when i'm gonna be heading out the door in a little bit so it kind of seems like the perfect time to start this Okay, so I'm gonna close off the vlog here, but can I just say that I started Interview with the Vampire last night. This is gonna be my final update because I'm literally just about to start another vlog, but I got 86 pages through and oh 
my god is all I'm gonna say. I will save <laughs> the rest of my reading experience for the next vlog because um, wow is all I can say. Wow. So um, yeah, <laughs> I want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I really hope you enjoyed and I'm yeah, like I said, gonna start another vlog right now. So I'll see you very, very soon. I hope you're having a good day and I will catch you when I catch you. So ciao.